to jump center. You see there, Taya Sidberry, that's one of the newcomers for Boston College, the transfer from Utah, who came in after averaging 11 minutes per game last year for the Utes and scoring five points. And we are off and ready to go. Kayla Ivey, who's back from injury for Boston College, will be the starting point guard this year. First opportunity, Dontavia Wagner. No, but the follow is there from JoJo Lacey, who gets the Eagles the first points of the season. Boston College going to pick up full court here. Joanna Burnaby McNamee told us, Eric, they want to really press the issue. And how about that? It works immediately on a 10-second call. Couldn't get it across half court in time, and that's exactly what Coach Mack is looking for out of her team defensively. So I think we're gonna see a little bit of a different look from this Boston College team this year, just because of the makeup of the roster. They're a little bit smaller than we've seen in years past, so we might see a little bit more positionless basketball is the word that Coach Mack used when talking to us. And there's a nice jumper from Dontavia Wagner to give Boston College a 4-0 start. And that's a new part of her game that she really worked on in the offseason. It's that mid-range jump shot. Most of her points came going to the basket a season ago. She took a three on the opening possession, and she hits about a 16-footer here. Janelle Allen, hands off, Rona Power. Cassidy is good. First points of the game for the senior from Dublin, Ireland. Beautiful looking jump shot. She shot 40% from three-point range a season ago, Eric. And fill it up from long range and hit that one in the mid-range. Dontavia, excuse me, Andrea Daly, her jumper is off the mark. And Holy Cross will run out in transition. This was a Holy Cross team that didn't play with a ton of pace last year, and that was something that Maureen McGarity talked about in terms of one of the reasons they were really good defensively is because they were good at playing to their pace. She said she wouldn't mind them seeing going a little bit quicker this year, especially with the veteran team that they have. Let's go back to that mid-range jump shot. Good looking stroke from Dontavia Wagner for the second bucket. You're right. And Coach McGarity actually was pretty honest with us talking about it. She said, I want the games to look more exciting even for our fans. Power Cassidy to the rim. No, and there's a rebound, but taken back away. Rona Power Cassidy nearly had a second try at it. And it's out of bounds off of Boston College. We're going to stick with it there for Power Cassidy. Not sure Andrea Daly just has her pocket picked. Well defended on the interior there by Kayla Ivy. Jumper is good. That's Kara McCormack, the senior, who made 41 three-pointers last year for Holy Cross. That was second most on the team. That one was just inside the three-point arc, so we're tied early 4-4. Eagles trying to answer. Kayla Ivy is off the mark from three. It's going to be interesting to see Kayla Ivey's offense. There's a foul on the backcourt. Nicole Dimer. Dontavia Wagner trying to get the steal, but Kayla Ivey hasn't played for such a long time, Eric. Had that long recovery from the ACL. And given the keys to run the offense here as she returns for the first time in about a year and a half. Which Mac talked about, you know, still takes a little bit of time to get her speed up where you want it to be and as you continue to build back and rehab. But is good to see her back healthy with an opportunity. There's a nice looking move inside from Taya Sidberry and the sophomore with her first two points as an eagle. You mentioned Sidberry coming in from Utah. That Utah team which was picked fifth in the preseason this year. So a really rising program out west. Now Sidberry coming into Boston College. 6-6 six, six game early going. There's Wagner, no. And that stays in bounds. On a power, Cassidy got to it. Simone Foreman, who had the bucket at the other end for Holy Cross. Now a three ball is off the mark. And the Eagles with an opportunity to run in transition. With Andrea Daly, who they expect to continue to take a big leap this year, though she's off the mark there. Talked about how this is a fun New England rivalry. Eric, this is the 33rd time in the last 35 years these teams have gotten together. It's almost like they're conference yeah. mates. Boston College has owned it, especially in recent years. A jumper from Daly. So, so far, we've seen Wagner step out. We've seen Daly step out. 
little bit of an added dimension to each of their games. Good answer from Lindsay Berger. Well, she had a great game a season ago here at County Forum. Berger, 16, 17 points, beg your pardon. 17 of the 42 that Holy Cross had that whole game. Last year's game, it was a rock fight. Low scoring. Sidbury left hand did not get the roll and a rebound to Perger, who was seventh in the Patriot League last year in rebounding with just under six and a half per contest. Out of bounds here to Boston College, and Ja'Kayla Thompson comes in for the first time for BC, the freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. She's going to back up Kayla Ivey as the point guard as a rookie. Where they love their basketball in Louisville. Grew up around there, you're going to have a basketball in your hands at a very young age. As Miss Kentucky basketball nominee last year. Left-handed player, too. Fun to watch the southpaws. Tried to get it into Sidbury, but it was well defended by Holy Cross. And McCormack out on the run. Good kick to find Flanagan, who's wide open. And a Patriot League All-Rookie Team selection from last year. Caitlin Flanagan knocks down the first three-pointer of the game either way. And another turnover created here by Holy Cross. Little handoff for Berger, got rid of it. And there's the passing of Holy Cross. Unselfish basketball to give the Crusaders a 13 to eight lead and force a Boston College timeout. Now, uh, Caitlin Flanagan, sophomore from Plymouth Meeting, Pennsylvania. First, gets the look from the perimeter. And then off of the turnover, she gets that and runs. Holy Cross takes the early five point lead in the first quarter. Some people just know what road to take. Turn left. Not happening. Take the next exit. Don't think I will, disembodied voice. Recalculating. You're not from around here, so you don't know the back roads. Those are the people who know safe drivers save 40% with Allstate. Being an NFL fan is the greatest. Unless your home team doesn't match your hometown. Because it's hard for dolphins to survive in the desert. And eagles don't tend to nest with giants. But with NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube, you can watch your favorite teams out of market Sunday games. So no matter where you live, it'll feel a little more like home. At least on Sundays. NFL Sunday Ticket. Thirteen eight lead for Holy Cross. It's a seven nothing run for the Crusaders. Here's some of the numbers from last season. This Holy Cross team. We talked about the defense was really the calling card. Boston College. The one number that Coach Mack has talked about wanting to bring down a little bit is that turnover number. They were near the bottom of the ACC in turnovers last year. To return though, about two thirds of their scoring though they're without Ali Van Timmeren to start the season due to injury. Dojo Lacey does get rid of it. Tiana Todd passed up the initial three, then was short on the two. Three-point chance that is a little bit short from Grace Munt. Junior, they're expecting to play a little bit more this year, only averaged about seven minutes per game. You see Todd, there's a foul against BC. Yana Todd on the handoff, then set the screen. She comes in off the bench, as does the sophomore Kayla Lazama, Boston native. Coach Mack looking for a spark for her team. Can't do that anymore on those dribble handoffs. You gotta set yourself. Can't keep moving into the defender. That's a point of emphasis the last couple of years for officials. They'll call that every time. It's a lot of different spots, whether it's Todd, whether it's, you know, who's going to take that jump and be that second option behind Wagner as a scoring threat for this Boston College team this year. There's good defense at the rim by JoJo Lacey. It was. It's the big body of Lindsey yeah. Berger. Gave up some size there, still made a good play. And now JoJo with the step back three. That's off the mark. Simone Foreman found the rebound, the sophomore. Kayla Lazama is in there for Boston College as well, the sophomore from here in Boston. Berger with a nice little move from Munt to get inside, and Allen to the bucket is not there. That was a good contest by Todd that time. 
He's not a big rim protector for Boston College. Todd shoots that one over the rim straight out of bounds. But they're going to have to have a combined team effort this year protecting the paint. This time it's JoJo Lacey on the big for Holy Cross Lindsey Berger. JoJo getting her hands up there. and Without a true five really on the roster, Eric, it's going to have to be that combined effort there on the interior. Holy Cross has done a good job weaving through this Boston College defense in the early going. McCormack, another three-point try is off the mark. But a rebound out to Foreman. So a couple of different chances there for Holy Cross, and a third effort for Kara McCormack got to it. That's a good defensive play, though, by Ja'Kayla Thompson. Got her hands in the way there, and is out front for Kayla Lazama. First bucket for Kayla Lazama, the sophomore. Eight minutes a game last year. Coach Mack has seen a lot of improvements from her in the offseason. And you made a great point that Ja'Kayla Thompson, the freshman, made a great play to set it up. And here is the best theft on the team, Wagner. Octavia missed at the rim. Lazama following it up was not there. And both teams have struggled a little bit from the floor here in the early going. Holy Cross, oh, of its last six from the field. Boston College won for its last seven. Uh, still knocking a little bit of rust off in the season opening game. Allen inside against Todd and a foul. Yeah, that time, Tiana Todd left her feet. That's what led to that foul being called. A couple of moments ago, here's the hands by the freshman from Louisville. Michaela Thompson, and how about this head ahead pass? Perfectly thrown. Lazama, little mid range stop and pop. First basket of her second season on the Heights. So free throws coming up for Allen, who was a 66% free throw shooter last year. Talking about Ja'Kayla Thompson. He has to play a lot. Freshman just onto campus this summer, but with Kayla Ivey coming back from injury. And Coach Mack always needs, really wants to have a true point guard on the court at all times. You're going to see number one there in white. And a lot of run early in her career. Remember, one of the things last year for Boston College is they really only had one point guard who was healthy on the roster because of the injury to Kayla Ivey. So now that Ivey's back, plus Thompson, and those two are both going to get a lot of minutes. Lazama bobbled the initial pass, then off the mark on the three. Sidberry, what an effort in front of the Holy Cross bench, keeps that possession alive, and then Daly will go to the free throw line. Well, we've heard a lot of great things about Taya Sidbury, the Utah transfer. Watch this. You said it. Great hustle. Keeping that one in play. And right into enemy territory there on that Holy Cross bench. Taya Sidbury is the all-time leading scorer in the history of the state of Utah in high school basketball. Look at that. She scored over 2,500 points in high school. 2022 Very accomplished miss basketball in the state. Very remarkable career. And I think it's a nice option here for this Boston College team. As someone who played for a really impressive program, but also now looking for an opportunity to play a little bit more minutes. There's Maureen McGarity on the other side for Holy Cross. What a start to her career after 10 pretty successful seasons at UNH before coming to Holy Cross. As we mentioned last year, Patriot League title. Eight to shoot, and a blocking foul goes against Boston College. Oh. Joanna Burnaby McNamee in her sixth season now at the helm of Boston College. Said to us, you know, still trying to figure out what exactly this team is going to be. It's sort of an odd combination where you do bring back a decent amount in terms of scoring, but some key pieces have departed, so you're working in some newcomers and some freshmen, and some injuries as well throughout the course of the offseason. Yeah, and she was more specifically totally in, uh, in doubt about what she'd see from her team today. And she said, I have absolutely no idea what to expect in this game. 
Three-point try. Daly a little bit short. And I think they're going to get Thompson on the rebound for the foul. So first foul on Ja'Kayla Thompson. Boston College now 0 for 6 from three-point range. They're much better inside the arc. This might be a, a game where you just want to forget about the long-range stuff, at least for now, while they're not going in and try to score it at the rim. Howard Cassidy comes inside, missed the two. Andrea Daly has another rebound. It's two for her in this first quarter. Daly steps into a triple, and again is off the mark. But an offensive rebound momentarily, Sid Berry had it. Well, a three-point Holy Cross lead. Three-pointer not there from Mary Elizabeth Donnelly, the sophomore from New Jersey. Sid Berry trying a three. Be open until somebody's gonna make him on both sides here of the early going. Let's see if they got Daly there on this foul. Got Jeff Smith, the referee, calling a foul on somebody. He's trying to figure out against exactly whom. Donnelly trying to walk it off a bit, and in fact, we'll go to the bench. So the foul goes against Boston College. Take a look at this one again. Yeah, Daly a little push in the back, I guess. Inside power, Cassidy. But an offensive foul called on Holy Cross. Just going back to that previous play that we should do the replay of. Not sure they actually called a yeah, foul they on may anybody. Not have. It still is on Ford. That foul right there was called on Caitlin Flanagan. It was an injury whistle, but it was very awkward the way the play was stopped there after the rebound. Chance to hold for the final shot of the quarter here for BC. Ivy looking to find inside for Wagner. Wagner, right hand is off the mark. And that's how the first quarter comes to an end. So a fifth. Venice. Not that I've ever been. I, was, I, I hear the food's good. What I've been told. Well, Cormac with two points. So Holy Cross's lead is 17 to 12 as we start the second quarter. And there's an answer from Andrea Daly. All right, a little kiss. He's in the window there, Daly. The second basket. Our Cassidy is good from three. It's a second chance opportunity there. Boston College unable to secure the defensive rebound. Giving Brona the opportunity there from the corner. Holy Cross has rebounded extremely well here in the early going. 18 to 10 overall, including six offensive rebounds for the Crusaders. Here's the most recent of them. Good defense initially there by Dontavia Wagner, but all just bounces right into a Crusader hand. Sid Berry against Allen. Got rid of it. Dontavia Wagner to the bucket. Four for Dontavia. Little Euro step to get her into the paint there. It's a crafty move by a senior. They're expecting a lot of scoring from her this season. You look at the year-over-year -year jump from basically about three points a game as a sophomore to 13 last season after coming in as a transfer from NC State. Missed nine games last year in the heart of the ACC season, so because of that, she doesn't qualify on a lot of the ACC leaderboards, but had as good a year as you could have hoped for. She took a big jump. Coach Mack hoping she can continue that jump here this year. Kayla Ivey's off the mark from deep. That's what she does so well. Right place, right time there. Octavia Wagner had the rebound bounce right into her hands. And there is the three-pointer. Andrea Daly with a great start. Nine points. And Boston College within one. First three-pointer that's gone down, Eric. Second chance points for BC. They'd been 0 for 9 from long range. 
And Dontavia Wagner creates another turnover. This is where the Eagles thrived when they were going right last year, creating turnovers and getting out and running in transition. Back to the previous possession. There's the ninth straight miss three, but it's kept alive. As I said, Wagner, she's just got a nose for that basketball. And she knows who to find. A couple of buckets already in the second quarter for Andrea Daly. Andrea Daly, who was just under 10 points per game last year. So that's why when we say four returning scores, nearly average 10 per contest for Boston College. We can round it up. Yeah, it's close enough. Coach Mack said if she can come back, she's kind of battling some nagging injuries in the offseason, but really thinks she has an opportunity to be pretty close to a double-double a lot of nights. Of her athleticism and her ability to rebound the ball, and you've already seen her scoring on display. As Boston College ties the game after one of two of the line for JoJo Lacey. Little zone here, too, from BC. Simone Foreman off the mark from three. A 6 0 run for Boston College over the last 90 seconds to tie this game. Ayla Ivy to the basket. Good defensive work there by Kara McCormack to get in the way. The senior from Smithtown, New York. Boston College needs to keep looking for Andrea Daly the way that she's been playing here early in the quarter. Wagner missed inside. Lindsey Berger finds the rebound for Holy Cross. You like to try to find the hot hand, though, Eric. Wagner forced that one just a little bit. Good defense, BC. Yeah, another one. BC was third in the ACC at forcing turnovers last year. Out in front, Daly, not this time. And stay here. Got a box out foul on Holy Cross. Coach McGarrity's not going to like that. Andrea Daly getting her hands on it, running the floor. Said keep feeding her, they did. It's a tough left handed finish, though. Just curled off that rim. Good look inside, and Daly into double digits. How about that inbounds play? That's designed by the coaching staff. You got those handful or two of underneath, out of bounds, inbounds plays you go to, and BC ran a perfect one right there to get the layup. Power Cassidy, such a good catch and shoot shooter. Seven most three pointers in the season for Holy Cross last year for Brona Power Cassidy, knocked down 63 of them. Eagles have their first lead in a while here after the daily layup, 22 to 20. Foreman trying to end this run and does. Simone Foreman with five points. Averaged five a game last year in 15 and a half minutes. A pretty good freshman season, too, coming off the bench. Expect her to take a leap in her sophomore campaign. Wagner starts from the elbow. Contavia. She's been really well defended inside. That time it was Callie Wright, the senior. Came in last year as a transfer from Memphis. Our Cassidy again. That's her spot. Corner pocket hit a couple of triples from right over there in front of the Boston College bench. Second three-pointer, eight points in the game for Brona Power Cassidy. Kayla Ivy can't quite answer. Reflected out of bounds, so it'll stay here. 519 remaining in the second. Now Allen back in for Holy Cross. Eagles, the line change of Sidbury, Todd, and Thompson all coming in. And I think with Kayla Ivy going back to the bench, you're seeing some of the understandable rust in the first half of basketball in a year and a half. Just all three of her shots. Eric, they've all been from three point territory. Those long range shots are not going down. Sometimes it's just easier to try to get it going to the basket. Holy Cross has defended pretty well inside, though, in the early going. Power Cassidy falling away. Decent look, not there. Bazama, a 
That's too strong from three. We're talking about drawing a crowd. Sidbury got that offensive rebound. She had three players surrounding her. EC still couldn't find an open shot. Sidbury again is blocked. That's Callie Wright. Gives up a little bit of size there, but was in good position to make the block. Cormac, oh, yeah, lost her footing there. Now does go against Boston College, which sends us to another timeout. Four-point lead, Holy Cross. Power Cassidy, the Patriot League MVP of their tournament championship, on fire again. Being an NFL fan. Welcome back to Conti Forum. There's Maureen McGarity, we talked about it in her fourth season here, and she's really become a program builder in the Northeast. Did it at UNH, and she's done it again here at Holy Cross. Yep, that's what you love to see. You get better every year, right? Seven wins to 20, and last season 24, and an NCAA tournament berth. This year, perhaps her most talented team of all four that she's had at Holy Cross. Now Allen, good looking pass, but it's cycled around well to find McCormack. It's a pretty good look there. And then a foul called on the rebound, so they'll stay here with Holy Cross. I was surprised to see the Crusaders once again pick per first in the league, in the Patriot League, when they bring back basically everyone from last year's tournament championship team. That, that Boston University team's very talented too. That's the team they beat to win the Patriot League tournament last March. Had to do it at BU, it's a great win. Those two teams, you have a feeling they might collide later this season again in a big one. Two to shoot, got to get it off. Thompson was short. I think it was a little too unselfish there by Taya Sidbury. She had the ball on the elbow there, about five on the shot clock. Sidbury had an opportunity to try to score. Newcomer decided to pass it into the corner. It was a tougher chance for Jaquela Thompson. She couldn't hit the rim. It's a little bit when you have some new pieces early on in the season, you're still working some of those things out as you play together. Good luck from Flanagan, who got right inside. Seven points for Caitlin Flanagan, who averaged just under seven last year for the sophomore point guard. It's also top ten of the Patriot League in assists. And a Todd off the mark. And JoJo Lacey couldn't quite hold the rebound after getting it away from Callie Wright. A Boston College rallied to take the lead earlier here in the second quarter. They haven't scored in three and a half minutes. An opportune time for a drought. The backcourt foul there that time, it's Lacey, but Boston College is not making shots. Nine for 36. 25% from the field here in the opening half thus far. Reminds you a lot of the game last season here between these teams. It's a 52-42 Boston College win in a game that the Eagles trailed by nine and then held Holy Cross scoreless for the final eight plus minutes of that game. Todd out in front, off the turnover. Mm. It's kind of interesting what we're seeing because a lot of the tenants of what has made Boston College good under Coach Mack, you are seeing today, but then you're also seeing some of the rust offensively with the combination of a new team and early in the season, because they are forcing turnovers right now, and they are doing well on the offensive boards. Yeah, Lacey there on a push. JoJo Lacey just picked up her second foul. I think you're right, Eric. And look, shooting can be contagious. You see one teammate hit one, Maybe you get the flow going, push in the back, but uh, right now it's contagious in the wrong direction for BC. They're missing from all over the offensive court. Threes, twos, layups, nothing going in right now. Still Foreman. playing hard defensively. Yep, they are, and Foreman couldn't hit there. Really, we've gone into a little bit of a drought here. Holy Cross is on an eight nothing run going back over the last four minutes. Holy Cross shooting 38% from the floor. Boston College just 24%. Wow, 
Wagner on the drive against Berger, and they get Lindsey Berger on the foul. That's two on Lindsey Berger. Yeah, that's the reason for the concerned look on Maureen McGarity's face. Starting center having to go to the bench. And now Boston College looks like nobody really wants to take a shot. A lot of passing up good looks. Wagner's the one who lets it fly. Yeah, there you go. Good committed shot there from Dontavia with six points. Good job by Todd, trying to force power. Cassidy right. And a good three-point look. So Simone Foreman, you always need players who, even if you bring back a lot of pieces, there's always someone who kind of steps up a little bit into the rotation. And how about Foreman with eight points in the game for Holy Cross? 31-24 the lead for this veteran Crusader team. Wagner starting to get a little bit more aggressive offensively, was forced off there, and a jump ball is called, which will give possession to the Crusaders. And trying to force power Cassidy to go right. End up swinging it around, and there's the sophomore Simone Foreman. Holy Cross has made five threes. Biggest reason they've got a seven point lead late in the half. Feels like a big 119 here. Holy Cross with some momentum here. Austin College has struggled from the floor. Foreman for Power Cassidy. Got Wagner up in the air, but travel. Made a good move, too. Like the pump fake. Let's drag that pivot foot before she put a dribble down. Watch this. Yeah. It. Ever so slightly, but she did it. Daly, who was good early in that first quarter, he's still the game's leading scorer with 11 points. Bauer Cassidy, Daly slipped there. Finds Flanagan open. That's again off the mark from three. That's a good look, though. Happy with that if you're Holy Cross and Flanagan's hit some of those today. They have Sidbury being grabbed underneath. It's bonus time too for BC, so free throws here with 39 seconds to go. Taya Sidbury's got an opportunity to make an impact on this game offensively. She's been pretty passive here in the second quarter when she's gotten the ball. This time works her way to the line there by getting the contact. So three points early, was good free throw shooter last year. Something that Coach Mack made sure to mention. Has the opportunity though, to step into a role here and really grow into it. Especially as we've talked about with Boston College needing some size underneath. Nice kick and the extra pass. But off the mark from three. Good closeout defense that time by Andrea Daly. Made life difficult, the shot clock is off at the end of the second quarter. And what a different feel this will take on if the Eagles can find something on this final possession. Sid Berry, five seconds remaining. Nice look at the rim, but it didn't go. It's not a bad look down that for You have a team that won the Patriot League tournament you're playing in what's traditionally a one-bid conference. How do you keep everybody focused day in, day out when the final prize is very clearly just what you accomplished last year and it's almost like you want to just get back to that point immediately rather than having to go through the whole season, obviously. Just kind of just talked about the idea of the responsibility of this group and trying to finish off what they've started here every single day. Lanigan got caught underneath, and Daly took it away. Good hands. Boy, they had a great chance to score on the break there, too. A missed layup started that possession. 
And one thing you're definitely seeing from Boston College that is still there is the ability to force turnovers. And that's something that is, that's been a staple under Coach Mack through the years. Daly pull up jumper in and out. A couple of misses to begin the half. Ivy and Daly and the iron continues to be very unkind for the home team. Jumper right back out to Brona Power Cassidy for Holy Cross. Flanagan's going to tie it, and that one is not there. Well, that's four offensive rebounds already this half for Holy Cross. Borman this time again is no good. Allen got another offensive rebound, and Janelle Allen has the basket. Just dominating the boards, the visitors from Worcester. 12 offensive rebounds for Holy Cross in the game. Wagner inside is foul. Talked about what they've done on the offensive boards. This was the third chance on this possession alone. And the senior from Lake in the Hills, Illinois, Bill Allen put it in. One of the more unique Town names that we've come across. Lake in the Hills. Very descriptive. I was going to say, it doesn't leave much to the unknown. Two with the line for Wagner. That's eight points for Dontavia. So 33 28 our score with Holy Cross up on Boston College. Flanagan, good job on the inside out movement for Brona Power Cassidy. Eric, all three three-pointers that she's made today have come out of the corner. There's a big one here early in the third quarter to make it an eight-point lead. Big response, yeah, Jojo big Lacy. Time answer, Jojo Lacy now. Makes it a six-point game once again. Would have been Boston College's second made three of the game, but her foot was on the line. How about BC is going to go full hockey line change here? First chance to see the freshman Lily Prashevets coming originally out of the nation of Hungary. Well, if you're giving up a lot of offensive rebounds, you put in the biggest player on your roster. What Boston College does here with Prashevets. Well, we talked a little bit about the idea of positionless basketball. Some of that has to do with the size. And some of it has to do just with a little bit of a different makeup of this Boston College team. You talk about crash of vets coming in from Hungary. We haven't yet seen Nene and Jai the first year from Senegal. You also have Todd from Canada. So there's a little bit more international experience on this team, which lends itself to a bit of a different type game. And there you see crash of vets with a good job defensively there, and then a traveling violation called against Holy Cross. Immediate impact there on the interior from the Hungarian. Standing tall, this is a very national and in many ways international roster that Coach Mack has put together at Boston College. All those different places represented. We're gonna see a little bit of a different style based on the component parts. The native Kentuckian Thompson gives it off, crash of vets. Certainly not afraid early on in the game. A couple of blocks on one end, though that try on the layup missed. And Holy Cross out on the run. Lazama nearly got a piece of it, but it finds Brona Power Cassidy. And then the rebound. And if that's Allen, that's her third foul. And indeed, it is Janelle Allen who's called for the foul going over the top. There you see Nene Jai talking about that talented freshman. Be a big call as Holy Cross nearly had another offensive rebound, but over the back was the decision by the referee. Rashovets inside. Foul was called before it. And there is, by the way, Nene and Jai, the first here. It's a tough pass. A lot of purple in between. Fresh of Edson and Jai, but the foul kind of bailed her out a little bit. Baseline underneath inbounds. 
Todd, spot up three, it's good. Well, the other way to look at it is, at some point, they're due. And Tiana Todd knocks down the triple. Three-point game, close as Boston College has been in a while. Flanagan with the Eagles putting some pressure on the ball. Finds its way to Power Cassidy as Holy Cross will reset. With 13 seconds remaining on the timer, holding on to a three-point lead. A Cormac inside. Flanagan working with a good find for Power Cassidy. That's just beautiful basketball. The back cut by the senior. Boy, she left in Jai in the dust and got the easy layup there. Five assists now for Flanagan. Holy Cross has 12 as a team. And a lead back out to five. Jai inside is fouled. Here's Nene going right back at Rona Power Cassidy, who scored against her on the other end. The contact there is the help came from Berger. That's yes. three on Lindsey Berger. So it's worth noting here that both of Holy Cross's inside players with Allen and Berger have three fouls right now. So something to watch, especially where Holy Cross has had a bit of a rebounding advantage right now. They've out-rebounded Boston College 40 to 21 yep. for the game. Well, we were talking about at halftime how Boston College was going to have to be a little more competitive on the boards to come back. They were out-rebounded by 11 in the first half. Eric, you just read those stats. They've already been out-rebounded by 10, not even halfway through the third quarter. One of two at the line for Jire. First points is an eagle. 38-34, so the Holy Cross lead. There's some of those foul numbers to watch as we go through this second half. Little head fake from Grace Munt, who hit a couple of shots, opportunities early. Six to shoot, Power Cassidy got caught in by Krashovets, and that is thrown away. It was kept in, though, and blocked by Krashovets. Boy, this mass line change for Boston College has really caused a bit of a spike for the Eagles, and Ja'Kayla tucks into the basket. And it's the freshman making the plays on each end of the court. Krashevets on the block. Thompson's first career points on the other end. Remarkably, this is a two-point game. On needs help, has Wright. Wright spinning away with Krashevets right there again. Lazama with good defense on Power Cassidy. And the rebound down to Krashevets. What an effort from Lily Krashevets here in her first action as an Eagle. Tiana Todd finds Krashevets. Not there. Simone Foreman out of the run for Holy Cross. Stop and pop and good. And that stops the run for Boston College. Simone Foreman with 10 points. Good little stop and pop. Boy, Krashevets getting a lot of run here. She was gasping for air at the end of that trying to run back down court playing so hard for BC. Howard <laughs> Cassidy double team comes and a foul it looks like is called against Boston College. That sends us to a timeout. So, a little bit of a different feel to this game. Boston College stiffening up on the defensive end and starting to claw their way back on the offensive end as well. It's a four-point game here in the third. Well, sometimes you just need a little bit of a spark and you don't know exactly where it's gonna come from. And Lily Krashevets, even though she didn't score a point on that sequence, Josh, really big impact as Boston College kind of clawing their way back here a little bit. Yeah, they were having a hard time getting defensive rebounds, protecting the paint, but when that line change occurred, all five players subbed, and Krashevets entered for the first time in her career, things started to turn around for BC. Trailed by as many as eight earlier this quarter. They've gotten a 
cut in half at the moment. And by the way, now basically Boston College has put back in some of those players who were taken off in that line change. So Wagner back, Sidbury back, Daly back. Janelle Allen inside, had the size advantage there, but Thompson did a good enough job defensively. And Boston College back of the run. It's a four point game right now, late stages third quarter. Dontavia Wagner right hand is good. Dontavia into double figures. That's her game, Eric. Talked about her jump shooting has been worked on, but bread and butter is attacking the rim. Nice pump fake. Yeah, that's a good one. And a physical foul there called on Andrea Daly. Janelle Allen taking a hard, clean foul. To the setup by McCormick. I say clean. Making a play at the basketball, even though she was yep. off balanced. Andrea Daly, she hit that hardwood pretty thumpish with authority. Did that work? A thumpish hit with a thump. It's, uh, grammatically incorrect, yet descriptively accurate. And Janelle Allen makes the free throw. They don't pay us to read the diction. Well, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> We're not getting graded, I hope. Two for two at the line for Allen, who was at 66% last year. Took advantage of that thumpish yep. hit. So back to four. Tiana Todd for three. Got it! Uh, Eric. Austin College had made one three-point shot the whole game until Tiana Todd came in, and she's hit a couple here in the third quarter. Best game of her career last season was against Holy Cross. Doing it to the Crusaders again. Had a career-high 20 in that game. There is Allen to answer at the other end, so eight points now for Janelle Allen, who averaged 10 and a half a season ago for Holy Cross, second leading scorer. Todd trying again. A little bit more of a weave here on the offensive end for Boston College. Sidbury looking for help out of the elbow and sets the screen for Daly. Andrea Daly gets Boston College within one. Last couple possessions for BC, much crisper offensively. Good ball movement, good looking jump shots. Good defense by Sidbury. And all the momentum on the side of the Eagles right now. Down a basket at the moment. Todd all the way in, just a little bit short. Right stops. Got a piece of the rebound, and it came out off BC. So possession stays here with Holy Cross. But before the jumper by Andrea Daly, this was a great press break by McCormick, Cap Power Cassidy. And then finally, the easy layup for Janelle Allen, who's got the last four for the Crusaders. Come back and you at Boston College, get a basket, have an opportunity to get the lead. Anybody's game here with 11 minutes to go. Borman spinning away. It's been a nice game for her so far. Got an offensive rebound. Still bouncing around after the second effort. And a third try defended well, but Power Cassidy right back on it. And Lindsey Berger finishes. Fourth time's a charm on that sequence for Holy Cross. Possession will stay here with 34 seconds remaining in the third. Eric, 19 offensive rebounds in the game. 11 in the third quarter alone for Holy Cross. There's one. There's two. There's three, and it leads to a layup. Three offensive rebounds on the possession. Crasho Vets is back into the game for Boston College. Three-point lead, Holy Cross. Daly has led the way with 13. That's a block. Two free throws for Andrea Daly. I thought the ref was playing like Pictionary or something there for a second. It was an 
exhaustive description of the call. Let's take a look. Yeah, the official here is Jeffrey Smith. It looks like a block to me. <laughs> we see. It's actually a flop warning. I think that's the mechanic okay. that you saw there. So you call a defensive foul and a, a warning for a flop. That's what those two hands going up and down mean. Holy Cross can't do it again, otherwise it's a technical foul. It's worth noting here for Boston College, they've made their free throws so far today. 10 for 12 at the line. And part of the reason this is a one-point game again. So Holy Cross has dominated the glass, but the Eagles have forced turnovers to make up for it. Three-pointer in and out from McCormack, but the follow goes! Another offensive rebound for Holy Cross. Twelve in the quarter on the offensive boards. This is Lindsey Berger doing the work. Look at her have the inside position on Daly and Kreshevets. Finishing through the contact, Lindsey Berger. Huge moment in the game as BC had cut it to one. Holy Cross extends it to four. And we go to the fourth quarter here at Conti Forum of the season opener in this turnpike rivalry between Boston College and Holy Cross. As good as BC in Italy, but you know, <laughs> still, but honestly, better than the experts said. Underrated. Well, that's an important defensive rebound there. Shot just rimmed out. Holy Cross had all those offensive boards in the third quarter, but JoJo Lacey picks up the first opportunity to get a D rebound in the fourth. Boston College is going to have to do a better job at that here in the final 10 minutes. Wagner inside. Octavia Wagner off a good setup from Lacey. Great start here for BC. Get a defensive stop on one end, and Wagner doing the work in her office inside. Early on, that inside, Holy Cross did a pretty good job. And it's part of the reason that the Eagles were forced to step back and take a lot of threes. But as they've made a few more, the middle has opened up a bit. And BC's done a better job driving, and they've been able to get more baskets inside. Berger, skip pass. Aitlin Flanagan has done a nice job running the point for Holy Cross. Rona Power Cassidy, a bit short. Good contest. Boy, Tiana Todd had a hand right in her face on that release. Through all this stretch, Holy Cross has managed to hold on to the lead the whole way. The Eagles have not led since they were up 22 to 20. Todd, step back. Holy Cross got a piece. And that is just the first turnover of the second half for Boston College. They've been really good on the basketball. And just the fourth for the game. Shot clock winding down. Power Cassidy steps inside, wasn't there. But the rebound is mm. off of Kayla Ivey. Couldn't quite secure it. So reset to 20 on the timer. At that time, pretty good box out by Andrea Daly. Ball landed right in the lap of Kayla Ivey. Just slipped through her fingers. Offensive rebound, 21 for Holy Cross. Comes down to execution here in a close game late. Holy Cross has to feel good about all the experience they have on the court in a close one. And a foul against Todd as Power Cassidy drives the baseline. You look at the players that are back for Holy Cross. Rona Power Cassidy. Tara McCormick, Janelle Allen, all seniors. Lindsey Berger, a junior with a lot of playing time. Four of their five starters, upperclassmen who have been through a lot of these close battles. A bit strong there. Holy Cross now is just 
25% from the floor in this second half. Wagner pull up jumper. And Boston College has tied this game at 49. Turning to their leader here in the beginning of the fourth. She's got the two buckets. The opening two and a half minutes of the final quarter. Cormack. Down Flanagan right back inside. Take it away. Good read by Andrea Daly for the lead. Wagner. A little bit short, but an offensive rebound by Nene and Jai. And a three-pointer is no good from Daly, but another board. The freshman from Senegal with two huge offensive rebounds and draws the foul. This is just a sheer want and will. There's the first one to get Daly the open look. Watch this, flying through past a couple of purple jerseys for Nene and Jai. That's the fourth foul on Lindsey Berger. So Berger out with four, Allen has three. Part of the reason Boston College has been able to take a little bit more advantage inside as the game has gone on. Jojo Lacy, no. But the follow from Andrea Daly. 17 points in the Eagles lead. Turning the tables on the offensive glass here on that possession. Holy Cross gonna get a timeout. And Jai started it with a couple. And then it was Andrea Daly on the boards. First lead since early in the second quarter for BC. Here's Daly. The finish and the two-point advantage here with about seven minutes to go. Being an NFL fan. This game, but gosh, they've certainly done it. First six points of the fourth quarter for BC. It's a couple of buckets from Dontavia Wagner. And then on the offensive glass, Andrea Daly. Couple of experienced players, and it has been quite a turnaround for BC. Slowly but surely, but a pretty sustained run here, 23-13. That goes back basically 11 minutes and nine seconds of game time to now Boston College holding the lead by two. And you know when that started? That started with the line change, and all five players got subbed out by Joanna Burnaby McNamee about two minutes into the second half. Sometimes you just need a spark. Wagner nearly had a turnover. Simone Foreman has been very good for Holy Cross tonight. Didn't have it there. Good defense again by Boston College. Late in the timer. And the Eagles on a run. Ja'Kayla Thompson, pull up jumper. Eagles putting on a little pressure defensively as well. Four points for Thompson now in her Eagles debut. Foreman skips out McCormack. Three-pointer is good. That's a huge shot for Holy Cross. Seven points for Kara McCormack. And BC scores the first eight points of the quarter before that one. Turn to a senior there. That's the biggest shot of the game thus far for Holy Cross. Stabilizes things. A one-point game. 53-52. Austin College the lead on opening night. Jojo Lacy. Jai has earned this playing time in the late stages of this game. Thompson's three-pointer, a touch strong. Lacy with the offensive rebound. The players have hit the deck. One for each team went down. That's why Jojo Lacy was able to grab that offensive rebound. Four offensive rebounds in this fourth quarter for BC after just one in the third. Let's see, they call it travel. Our Cassidy trying to fight for it on the floor. And a traveling violation gives possession here to Boston College. Well, that got a little physical at the end of it after the travel was called. The play through a lot of contact here. That's a good call as Jai came in, forced to travel, then watch this. Antivia Wagner just trying to rip the ball away at the end of it. Got a little testy with her and Brona Power Cassidy. An intense emotional game as it's gone on. Another tie up for the ball. Berger couldn't quite grab it before falling out of bounds. And remember, Lindsey Berger is out there playing with four fouls. Janelle Allen's out there as well with three. So Maureen McGarity has gone with size here at the end of the game, trying to stem the run for Boston College. Saw their good look of 
The leg of Lindsey Berger hitting the end line there while she was touching the basketball. BC has possession. JoJo Lacey for three. A bit strong. Berger, the rebound. Got to be careful in there. It's a jump ball. Good rebound by Berger. Possession stays here, by the way, so Boston College will get a new sequence. It's five offensive rebounds here in this quarter. Just attack Lindsey Berger. Wagner and Daly like a pack of wolves. Well, you're midway through the quarter. No foul problems for each team in the quarter anyway. Nobody's close to the bonus. There's a travel, a little bit of miscommunication there on the screen with Daly trying to set it for Lacey. And that will do it as we go to the media timeout. 53-52, Boston College the lead over Holy Cross. Being an NFL fan. Well, this one going right down to the wire with Boston College holding a one-point lead over Holy Cross. Remember last year's game? Somewhat similar in the fact that Holy Cross had the lead. Boston College had to work their way back. Ended up holding Holy Cross scoreless for the final 8-15. It hasn't quite been to that level, but the defense has certainly stiffened in this fourth quarter. Not quite to that level, Eric, but I bet you close enough that Holy Cross and Coach McGarity are having flashbacks. Last year, they lost a late nine-point lead. Had an eight-point lead in the second half here today. BC's played great, great defense. Berger inside for Allen, who got three of JoJo Lacey and Janelle Allen on her season average from last year with 10. Holy Cross has the lead back. Well, that was a well-designed play out of the timeout designed by McGarity. What a move, Dontavia Wagner. And then Dontavia Wagner doing it herself, just slithering along that baseline as we go back and forth. Lacey went for the steal, but it left McCormack open. Berger, an offensive rebound, goes right back up with a shot from the elbow. Two good looks for Holy Cross did not go. And a one-point Boston College lead under four minutes to go. Daly on the drive was fouled. And what a game it's been for Andrea Daly with 17 points and seven rebounds and a chance to extend it. Let's go back to the previous possession after Holy Cross went in front. The baseline drive. Antavia Wagner has a huge fourth quarter in progress. She's got six points here in this period. Well, we talked about it's a little bit of a different role. Not that Wagner wasn't the focal point last year, but even more so as she steps into the senior season. Number one on the scout. The go-to option down the stretch in games like this. And she's done a good job of it here in the fourth quarter, helping the Eagles get out to the lead of three. McCormack inside. There's a sea of white jerseys there, but a blocking foul called on Boston College. I'd say it's on the pass. So no free throws coming up here for McCormack. The sliding in was Dontavia Wagner a little late. Didn't beat her to the spot. Good call by the official. Maureen McGarity wanted it to be a shooting foul, but as you said, it was called on the pass. So it is Wagner's third. Holy Cross inbounding underneath. Allen, really well-designed inbounds play. At 12 points for Janelle Allen. Wagner inside with a burst of speed. Rona Power Cassidy held firm. Holy Cross down by one, 3.07 to go. Little fake from Flanagan. McCormack may have had a look there. Pass it up from three and a foul on Daly. Still a couple of fouls to give for Boston College there. Here at the time of the game where you can afford to be aggressive, Andrea Daly was. 
Holy Cross, in terms of their foul situation, is a little bit more precarious right now than BC. As you said, neither team has taken a ton here in the fourth. Three for BC, two for Holy Cross. But Allen and Berger both playing with four fouls for the Crusaders. It's tipped away by Wagner. When Caitlin Flanagan got away with one there. You throw the ball and Dontavia Wagner is in the vicinity. Very often she's taking it back the other way. Just got her fingertips on it though and knocked it out of bounds. Good pressure defense by Wagner to knock it away. There she was again, getting her hands all across the basketball. See the foul trouble there with Berger and Allen, the starting front court. Big possession here. Good kick out. Flanagan, short from three. But an offensive rebound for Power Cassidy. Oh, it missed. It was a great look inside. And it somehow did not go. Daly at the other end. Good find. Octavia blocks. Lindsey Berger got it clean. Sidbury inside. Runner good. Taya Sidbury with six points in her Eagles debut. Well, that was the story of the iron unkind on one end, very kind on the other. Para Cassidy's layup bouncing out. Sidbury's bouncing in. Flanagan inside. Good move by Caitlin Flanagan. Nine points and six assists in the game for the Patriot League All-Rookie Team selection last year. Still a one-point game. BC is going to play this through Dontavia Wagner, you imagine. And she comes to get the ball in the mid-range. It is Wagner against Power Cassidy. And the foul. You need a basket. Early on in the season, you knew that it was going to be Coach Matt calling Wagner's number. Previous possession, watch this one. Taya Sidbury just able to float it in. Just her second basket of the game. But then Wagner getting the possession and the foul against Brona Power Cassidy. So two big free throws here for Dontavia Wagner. Three for three from the line today. 13 of 15 as a team at the charity stripe. These are games that under Coach Mack, Boston College has won and won and won over her six seasons. Big offensive rebound there by Lacey off the miss. So as Holy Cross was controlling the offensive boards early, but here in the fourth, the Eagles have gotten some big ones. Sidbury again inside, double teams there. What a find for Daly! 21 points for Andrea Daly. Don't need to get three. You can go get a two for Holy Cross. Power Cassidy, good answer. And a quick timeout by Holy Cross. We'll be back in 30 seconds for the conclusion of this one. 62-61, Boston College leads. Hey, babe. And they're talking again, saying you can't. Well, Boston College leads Holy Cross. Back and forth we go. Let's start on the Boston College offensive end. How about this pass by Taya Sidbury? Through a double team, finds the cutter, Andrea Daly. This is just great vision from the Utah transfer. This is how you beat a double. And 21 for Daly. But then the response, I said they could take a two. But the Crusaders much happier to get the triple out of Brona Power Cassidy. She's hit four of them from long range tonight. Worth noting here, both teams have two fouls to give. 62-61, Boston College. Sidbury again, they've gone inside here of late. Decent look, didn't go. And Holy Cross running the floor with a chance, down by one. Burgers home free. Took the long jumper, which was open. A rebound down to Lacey. Timer's off. Holy Cross has got a foul, and they do there with Flanagan committing the foul on Ivy. And no shots yet. So Boston College is going to inbound it. Boy, I don't know that that's the look that Coach McGarity 
would have really ideally wanted there for Holy Cross, bat an 18-foot jumper. Lindsey Berger. Boston College is going to take a timeout to talk about what they're going to do here on the inbounds play. They're going to inbound it from midcourt. It's been another defensive-minded battle between these Bay State rivals. And you can see Boston College generally very, very solid in the first five years under Coach Mack when it's low scoring like this. So let's talk about the shot selection one more time. It's one of those, it, it becomes pretty open here for Berger, so decides to take it. Certainly not a bad outside shooter. Just didn't quite yeah. manage to find it there. I mean, the, generally the consensus thought on that is there's a reason they're leaving you open. And you could see Taya Sidbury had decided yeah. to play a couple of steps back to right. give Berger that look. She wanted her to take that jump shot. Probably a touch earlier in the shot clock as well. So BC has the lead. And remember, Holy Cross will need to foul one more time. Now the next foul is free throws for BC. Take yeah. a look at the uh, bottom right of that graphic there. Holy Cross has the possession arrow with this much time left, 25 seconds. You can play defense for a little bit, try to get a steal or a tie up. A tie up, remember, yeah. that's as good as a steal. But if you don't get that in the first, I'd say, oh, seven or eight seconds, then you're gonna have to foul and put Boston College at the line. BC wants Andrea Daly to have the ball in her hands. She's six of six at the line. As a team, they've missed only three free throws the whole night. Sid Barry gets it in. Looks like they called the foul before the inbounds. And that will send Boston College to the line. This is going to be Kayla Ivey, who has not scored. Eric in a year and a half is going to go to the free throw line for BC. That's the player who was grabbed. Of course, she didn't play at all last season coming off of the ACL injury. Talk about nervous moments for the redshirt junior out of Forestville, Maryland. Four assists in her return to the floor for Kayla Ivey. Looks like they're looking at something over at the scorer's table. All set, here we go. Ready? Two. Making sure the clock was correct. Remember, the foul was called before the inbound, so no time goes off the clock there. It stays 25.4 seconds remaining, and it's off the mark of the first free throw. Well, the shot has been just a little bit off. Talked about the fact that there's certainly rust involved when you come back after that long of a layoff. It's a huge one here to make it a two-point lead. So one of two. And a timeout taken by Holy Cross. Well, they can advance the basketball here, so Coach McGarrity is going to drop a play inbounding from the front court. And then the question is, do you go for the win, take a three-point shot, or attack the basket and try to tie this thing up? If it's me, I'm getting the ball in the hands of Brona Power Cassidy, and yep. whatever the best look she thinks she can get, that's what I'm taking. Rona Power Cassidy has led the way with 16 points in the game today on 6 of 20 shooting from the floor. Four for nine from three and 12 rebounds. So both Rona Power Cassidy and Simone Foreman with double doubles for Holy Cross. Worth mentioning the foul situation here off of a miss. Remember Flanagan and Power Cassidy with three, Berger and Allen with four for Holy Cross. And Eric, remember, BC has a foul to give, so yeah. if Holy Cross takes a little bit of time here on the possession, you can give the foul and make them inbound it again with less time on the clock. Goes to Allen. Sit very close to her. It's out of bounds! And Boston College possession. I, will, I would think they would look at this. Watch the reach in here. I think it's Kayla Ivey. See oh, if we can hard. find it. Yep. That's Ivy who knocked it right off the leg of the Holy Cross player. Talk about a big time winning play potentially 
from a player just coming back from a long injury layoff, Kayla Ivey. 22.8 seconds to go. And they will review it. Well, as you said, it looked like Ivy uh, Previous plays on the review, out of bounds call is to Boston College. Again, just confirming the call on the floor is that it's Boston College possession, but at least from that initial look, Kayla Ivy was the one who got in there. Now the question will be once she deflected it to de deflect off of Allen once again before going out of bounds. Such an important call in this game, obviously. It's very understandable. The officials want to make sure to be a good Let's look see. at it here. I guess the question is, Ivy kind of rolls that off of the hand of Allen. So the question is, go back a little earlier in the sequence. Ivy makes contact there. It's just so difficult to tell who it's last off. Remember, the call on the court was Boston College basketball. Is there enough evidence here to overturn that call? It's got to be conclusive. See, that one right there would lead me to think that it stayed on Allen's hand a little bit longer. Well, that's what I thought initially, and that's what the official had yeah. ruled initially. Officials sort have of finished looking at the monitor. There you see Jeffrey Smith, Daryl Humphrey, and Kara Hunter getting into the conversation. Do you have enough evidence on that replay to change the initial call and give it back to Holy Cross? Did not seem like there was that. Obviously, a huge moment in the late stages of this game with Boston College holding a two-point lead. And it looks like it's like they've made a decision. Well, that's the official scorebook keeper they're speaking to. Play on the floor is confirmed, Boston College ball. And important to note that they have confirmed the call. So let's get a super close in view. Yep, that's, as we talked about, it's still on the hand of Janelle Allen after Ivy makes contact. She's off there, it's still on the fingers of Allen. So that looks like the correct call by the officials. So now Boston College got to get it in. They do, and Bailey is immediately fouled by Power Cassidy. Great job, Boston College. You get it to the player you wanted to go to the stripe, and Daly just mentioned a couple of moments ago, six of six in the game from the stripe. Worth noting on the turnover front, this is such a conversation for Boston College last year. Remember, while the Eagles were third in the ACC in turnovers forced, they were also last in the ACC, having committed the most turnovers, but today, 18 turnovers for Holy Cross, just five for Boston College, including just two in the second half. This is the big one here. This is to make it the all-important two-possession lead. Bailey with a huge day. 23 points. And Boston College indeed leads by four. This ties their largest lead at any point tonight. You know, you got to go back to last year, Eric. It's got a very similar feeling to what happened in November last season, November 23rd. So a couple of weeks later in the campaign, they played. Holy Cross had that lead late in the third quarter. Boston College finished so strong. Very, very similar vibes to this one here in the season opener. Not over yet, though. Holy Cross will advance the ball again coming out of the timeout. And again, they don't need to take a three. You're down by four points. So you're fine if you go to the basket and get a two-pointer here, you keep the game alive. Well, what a day it's been for Andrea Daly, leading the way for Boston College. 23 points in the game, 7 of 15 from the floor, and 8 rebounds. I think this little bank shot here early in the second quarter is really the thing that got her going. And the only three-point make of the first half for BC, Andrea Daly showing her range. Took a lead early in the second quarter. Holy Cross came back, grabbed control for a while. But Daly and Wagner, two of the leaders of this team, they have been the keys in the fourth. Again, you can go for two here if you're Holy Cross. Don't have to settle for three. It's turned over again. Dontavia Wagner.
A clean interception for Dontavia Wagner. And with 18 and a half seconds to go, Boston College a chance to extend the lead at the line. Second possession in a row that Holy Cross turns it over, which is not a good pass by Caitlin Flanagan. Dontavia Wagner, Eric, she gets a lot of high degree of difficulty steals. Frankly, that wasn't one of them. Can't lob a pass that high up into the air all the way across the court and expect to get away with it. So it's a five point game. Just nine seconds remaining. The Eagles have another turnover. Created three in the final minute. And Boston College is a winner on opening night 66 61.